Well, luckily I don't have a whole lot to talk about today. So, um, no, I'm the last one on, on the agenda, so you guys are itching to get out of here. But, um, and when I loaded, it looked like it may have gotten rid of some of my slides. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, anyway, legislative update, it, it actually, we're about halfway through. It's, it is, has been um, kind of quiet on the ag side, knock on wood. Um, there is one thing that um, the pesticide regulation section is doing. Uh, EPA introduced a certification and training rule, um, which will require all the states to um, <clears throat> come up with a certification uh, plan and program. Um, Maryland already has one. We don't expect it to affect us a whole lot. With the new administration that came on board, um, it has actually been put on hold for 60 days. Um, so EPA expects it to take effect, but probably now not until middle of March. It is um, giving everyone plenty of time to come into compliance with it. Uh, and it's, it's, it's gonna be five years actually. So we got three years to, um, MDA has three years to come up with a plan and then we have, after it's been approved, we have two years to get that plan out to you and, and uh, get everybody up to speed on that. Um, the one main issue and the, introdu uh, the uh, legislation that we introduced uh, is currently private applicators need to be 16 in order to sit for the exam, take the test. Um, we do have to change that now to 18. Uh, EPA will make some um, adjustments, I guess, I mean, as far as uh, immediate family goes, uh, but we're still not sure exactly what that's going to do. But that really is going to be the, the biggest thing for, for us, um, for private applicators. A bunch of different stuff on the commercial side. Um, one other thing is we do have to come up, when you took your private applicator test, most of you probably just took one, one test. We only have one test. Um, now we have to come up, if any of you do fumigation, um, we have to come up with a fumigation exam strictly for private applicators like we'd have for commercial. And we, uh, I'm not sure this happens in Maryland. This does happen out west and, and um, in the southern states, but uh, uh, aerial applications. So if any private applicators out there uh, flying anything on, um, we'd have to do that. We don't expect we will, um, just the uh, fumigation. Oh, no other bills have been introduced. Uh, I didn't have a chance to update this. There's actually a bill um, now that uh, uh, will affect primarily DNR, Maryland Environmental Service and, and um, State Highway, but that is a bill that will uh, ban all neonic applications on um, state property. Said somewhere about medical evaluations. Does that apply to small farms, any size farms? Well, I'll, I'll get in that a little bit. That actually has so, that's something else. <laughs> um, the other the other thing, uh, I mean, you can look at these bills yourself. Like I said, there's not a whole lot on the ag side. Um, the the neonic ban on all state properties uh, that does not include any DNR land that's um, leased out for for farming. Um, but uh, that's being proposed. And the other one is uh, there's something on atrazine. Uh, they're looking at uh, requiring the health department to do a study on atrazine um, based off of uh, information that, that, that we have. But uh, they're going to be looking at an atrazine study how much has been used, uh, has there been any medical issues, um, drift issues, things of that nature, so. So our, our applicator wise, we, we've actually grown a little bit, very little bit, um, but we had been going down, so. So to see, see the numbers up a little bit is, is, is kind of nice. So we do have 4,700 uh, certified uh, 
commercial applicators, 3,300 private applicators. So, and um, for us, that's all commercial. I'll skip over that. What's the registered employees? That's for the commercial applicators for the uh, um, commercial businesses. We do require any employee that provides pest control, they don't have to be certified, but you have to at least be registered. So manuals, uh, this applies to our commercial guys too. Uh, as far as private, um, that's available with your extension office. We do, we do have some in our office, but primarily you'd go through that with extension. Um, online recertification courses, you're all here, so you don't have to worry about that. But for some reason, somebody gets sick, whether it's you, whether it's a family member, whether you just can't make a meeting. Not that we require to do very many meetings. I mean, technically, you only need uh, you only need four credits in three years. I think that's pretty doable. But um, uh, we do have online courses. You can only do that once in a three-year period, but they are available. Yes? So with the health departments being pushed to do the Zika monitoring and spraying, will they have to take these courses also? The, we do have uh, most of, well, not most, but a lot of folks within the health department are, are certified with us. They're certified as... Um, they carry a public agency permit. But not so, like in the local health departments and environmental health departments. No, we got a lot, a lot of local got a lot of local departments are certified with us, especially over on the western side. I'm not sure how many over here on the shore, but mm -hmm. we do have a lot of a um, lot of folks with the health department that are certified because they're carrying public agency permits, um, especially especially Baltimore County, Baltimore City area with the with the RAT programs. So <coughs> If they're not, they need to be certified. You're only going to need to be certified if you're out there making recommendations or if you're if you're doing the actual applications. Okay. If they're not making those uh, recommendations, then it, it doesn't have to be done. I mean, if, if the if the health department is um, if they're sponsoring a program and they just bring in a, a commercial company to take care of everything, then you, you you should be okay. You just can't make a recommendation without being certified or an application. Okay, like I said, um, I'm gonna skip over a lot of this. I will apologize. Uh, we've been swamped at the department. I've, we've lost our certification and training person. So I'm, I'm trying to do that too. And, and I was uh, pretty lazy on the slides this year and I tried to combine the two programs the, as far as private and commercial. So um, forgive me if you see me start skipping over some things. Online renewal system. Um, keep an eye out for these postcards. Uh, you will see it. Um, just remember the private applicators, you're on a three year renewal mm -hmm. period. So um, on that third year, you will get that card mailed out to you. Uh, you can go online to do it. And um, you pay your, you, you get to your site. Your code will be on that postcard. Get to where you need to go. Fill in your information. Make your seven dollar payment and you can print your card off right there um, of course you can always still send it to our office but we are trying to get as many people to the online system as we can so enforcement we have a couple changes this year um, we were able to actually hire a couple of inspectors well, one's an old inspector who left us um, but um, came back uh, Russ Nortel and he covers Baltimore Harford areas and then on the shore um, if any of you had had to deal with him, it was PD Council, and he's he's been with us for the last 17 years, and for the last few years he's been covering the shore all by himself because we couldn't hire. Um, but we did get uh, Keaton Quitas now, who is um, in the up, handling the upper and midshore regions for us. He's been with us for about three months now. So business inspections again, this doesn't apply to you, but in case you want to know, we've. We did 617 routine inspections with our commercial app, uh, commercial businesses. Um, we did 1,800 inspections total last year, 600 of which were with these guys. Um, application records are, are a big problem, and I, I, we don't regularly ins inspect you. I don't know how many of you have seen an inspector. Um, generally, if you see one of our inspectors, it's because there was a complaint issued against you. Uh, but I can guarantee you, every time we come in on a private applicator complaint, we're also citing a records violation, even if the complaint's bogus. Um, there's always generally a records issue. So keep up with those records. 
So complaint-wise, um, we've we've 40 complaints um, total. We've been stuck at that level for the last three or four years now, um, which is fine. I, you know, if it goes down, great. I certainly don't want to see it go up anymore. But um, what did go up was ag our ag complaints this year. Um, and one of the other things is uh, this here. It only says five. Um, I looked yesterday. We actually turned down 78 um, neighbor neighbor complaints. So we get a lot of those every year, and it's just what it sounds like. Um, you know, somebody sprayed the property line or near the property line, drifted onto my property. Usually, it's a property line dispute. Of the ones we've turned down, we've we've narrowed it down to the fact that they just can't stand each other. Somebody put up a fence. Somebody tore down a fence. Somebody cut some trees. That's what it amounts to. But they are on the rise quite a bit. We love each other. I'm sorry. We love each other. <laughs> so on the on the 12 ag, and and this is no surprise to us. Probably wouldn't be to you either. But every single one of them were drift. Um, they were all drift cases. Uh, three on, uh, yeah. So six on commercial companies, three, three aerial and three ground. And um, we also had six on private applicators. That number has grown a couple, little bit over the last few years. I think more of you guys are starting to put on your own, <coughs> your own. Um, and if you're doing specialty crops, you can't find anybody to come do it for you. So you're gonna spray your own. But most of those six were on, on uh, Private applicators were on large, pretty much larger grain farms. I don't know that we've investigated anything on on uh, on any small fruit or veg crops. So over time, we've we've kind of been stagnant. But 2015, 2016, we were on the rise a little bit. We're we're even above our 2012 peak. So, um, but again, it's it's generally been been drift cases. We've got more people moving to Maryland. We've we've got people. Whether you think they are or not, they're watching your every move. And they're, they, they've got the cell phones and they've, smartphones are the worst invention in the world because now they've all got video cameras and it's all high def. So <laughs> um, they're, they're watching. The red indicates actual um, violations. So those are actual uh, cited violations where the complaint was um, proven. So. In 2016, out of, out of the 12, we had six that we did site drift on. <clears throat> Applications in a right of way. Um, SHA, every once in a while, gets a little bit of hair up their butt and they call us. <laughs> and, and that's fine, it's their property. Please be advised that, you know, I don't know what their the right of way is. I don't know if it's 20 foot from the side of the road, if it's 40 foot, it depends on the type, or if it's a utility right of way. Of course, utility companies don't tend to bother you too much, but State Highway has been on us last year quite a bit for this. Um, they blame the commercial guys, the commercial guys blame the private applicators, and both tend to blame the homeowners. Um, we do see a lot of this on the homeowner side, um, where They've got a ditch that used to be mowed constantly and, and they just quit mowing it. So they're out there and they just, they just get their roundup or their ortho, ortho total vegetation killer and they just wipe that ditch out, um, which causes erosion and can cause problems um, with the stru ditch structure and, and everything else. But just keep an eye on this. When, when you're out there, make sure you know where the right of way is because um, uh, where State Highway really is pushing this is they're responsible to, to um, for the total maximum daily load. They, they've got their, their goal that they have to hit on the TMDLs. Um, and what we had a problem with this year was a lot of the areas that they decided to take back and plant um, rather than let the farmer farm that piece. Um, the farmer came in and just, just pretty much wiped them out. Um, and that was four cases that we actually looked at this year with that. So 
might not be an issue next year, but maybe two, three years down the road, I'll be here saying it again. So um, just be aware of, of who owns the ditches, whether it's utility, whether it's state highway, whether it's county roads. Uh, we've never had an issue with county roads complaining uh, or the utilities, just, but state highway is looking at it. So the picture obviously didn't show up, but anyway, um, if, if uh, we do a recycling program every year, we've been doing it since 1995 or 1993 or something like that. Um, for those of you who participate, thank you very much. Uh, on the shore here, we've got uh, collection sites in, at the landfill there in Chestertown, um, the one in Easton as well, and in lower shore we've got uh, Salisbury. Uh, we do work with a lot of, uh, a lot of the, uh, the dealers and the custom applicators, so there might be someone that you purchase your product from that does it. Um, and they'll let you participate there. Unfortunately, our trailers aren't convenient to everybody, but maybe your manufacturer, or your, your dealer that you're buying has a trailer and they'll let you participate. Uh, but last year we collected 86,000 pounds of uh, pesticide containers, and we collected an additional 80,000 um, pounds. It, of uh, another type of plastic. It wasn't, it wasn't the high density polyethylene. It was a different type of plastic from a, a chemical manufacturer that uh, we collected. Yes? Are they available season long or just on specific dates? No, it's uh, June, July, August, and September um, is, is when we have it. And it's on the shore, because I do them and I don't want to have to drive to Annapolis on Fridays. <laughs> They're all on Fridays. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Chestertown is like this, is generally the second Friday, Easton is the third Friday, Salisbury is the fourth Friday of Central, June, July, August. Central hmm? Y'all don't Central spray Midland? anything apparently because we've tried and no one brings anything to us. <laughs> I'm looking for more sites, so if you've got a, a, a group of growers that want to get together and, and uh, have a place to have a place to, to to have a place to store them, we'll come pick them up. When you got enough, call me. <laughs> I only need about 200 to make a stop. <laughs> so, um, but we've got a con. What's that? Next year. What's that? This year? Next year. Next year. You can call me this year. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is. Um, most of these trailers that we're pulling from are, are probably have three, four thousand containers in there. So, but our contractor comes out of Texas every year in October, and uh, we grab them um, from. He comes up with a tractor trailer, which you can't really see there, but uh, those tops of those bags there, um, just giant super sacks that he puts everything in. Um, he spends two weeks here in Maryland and heads back to Texas and goes wherever. So federal update, uh, this is a big thing for y'all is, is the uh, worker protection changes. We've kind of been talking about it off and on for the last few years. Um, we're in the same boat as most of you where you guys may know that there's been a change, um, it's a rule change, you're not quite sure what the entire rule change is. I'll be honest, most of the state's regulatory folks are in the same boat. Um, this came into effect January 2017. Um, we didn't get a lot of our information as far as inspection guidances and, and uh, training manuals and things like that until two weeks ago. So, um, but, um, but the big thing is, uh, well, there's a couple big things. Annual training for workers. So it used to be once every five years. Now you'll have to train every year. Luckily, that doesn't start till 2018. So you got a you got a year yet to do that. Um, but uh, no grace period either. So as soon as those workers come come in, they've got to be trained. Uh, before you had a one much of a grace period. You had five days, but you had a grace period. Um, you can still be a certified ac applicator to train. Uh, Like a training is 2018 is when that starts. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, most of the insights that we inspect for worker worker safety, worker protection, um, 
don't have a lot of early entry workers. We might run into it with the greenhousers too, but, uh, but for the most part, it's not a big deal. But if you do have any handler, so that's anybody who's applying a pesticide or mixing or loading a pesticide, and if you do have any folks that are in the fields or in the greenhouses prior to the uh, restricted entry interval expiring, they do have to be 18. Uh, respirator fit testing must be provided by the employer. So they're going to have to get their medical eval and they're going to have to get a, a fit test. Um, there are several medical clinics now that actually offer this. Um, yeah. At least over here. I don't, I don't know about over by you. Um, so the doctors are in over here. Um, I know there's one in Cambridge. I think there might be one in Easton. Um, there's a couple in the Lower Shore. They all, they all provide fit testing. I'd like to think some over on, the, on your side do too, but I, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> um, water amounts have gone up. Uh, that's usually never been an issue. Um, the, the changes will be on the label. Uh, there was a big change that, that a lot of, I call it a change, it's really not a change, it's just something that they added, but it's something y'all have been doing anyway, but it's called the um, application exclusion zone. Um, basically it's, it's a buffer zone around that sprayer. Uh, could be 25 foot, could be up to 100 foot, it depends on the type of application. No one can be within that, they call it the AEZ. Um, so no one can be within that application exclusion zone. Um, workers, handlers, no one. Uh, it's strictly just the applicator. So where this gets tricky is a lot of you guys have fields that border on roads. Um, some very busy roads. The applicator is responsible for making sure that there is no one or no vehicles in his application exclusion zone. Um, the applicator must physically pause, stop the application, make the determination that no one's in within that AEZ, and, and then he, can, can, he or she can continue spraying. Um, it's caused a lot of issues at some of the grower meetings, but just really to simplify it, I mean, it, we've never been, y'all have never been allowed to spray anybody. <laughs> um, it's, um, it, it, that's on the label, it's, it's, in, it's in Maryland's regulations. Um, so, you know, again, there's just little added, added to it, um, to be quite honest. Um, I'm not sure how us as, as regulatory folks, how we would be able to actually enforce that unless we were there when you were doing the application. Um, where this could cause some issues, um, if any of you are bordering some, some properties where, where your neighbor really, really doesn't want you out there spraying or doesn't want you out there spraying early in the morning or late at night, um, you know, they could literally stand there at the edge and just, and just cause some problems. Um, EPA says, no, that's not going to be a problem. Um, as long as the applicator stops their application and continues when they feel it's, it's safe to do so. Um, the, only, the only way if you've got anyone doing that, you're actually just going to have to skip that spot until they get out of there. But um, we're learning too on this. Um, we've, I've made it very clear, uh, us, not just me, but a lot of states, we've made it very clear to EPA that um, we will not be enforcing the new rule. We will, we will do compliance. Um, we are required to do a number of WPS inspections every year. Um, every single one of those that we do this year and probably next year will be compliance based. So um, we're learning about the rule just like you are. Um, there are a lot of changes. There actually are some changes that benefit, benefit you. Um, there are some extra changes that may actually increase in paperwork as well. So. Um, hopefully I have the, uh, that website and really all you need to do is, is Google or whatever search engine you want to use, uh, PERC, P-E-R-C, W-P-S, and that'll take you to the PERC website, which is a 
EPA did not put out a whole lot of training information, but this website did a wonderful job at, at getting training out. They've got uh, pamphlets, they've got checklists, they've got uh, uh, actual training that you can download and show your workers or your handlers um, because that has changed. So if any of you have CDs or DVDs or, or whatever from our office, um, you can still use them this year, but, but as of next year, that's gonna change because training just got a little bit more intense for, for them. So, um, but they've got that stuff on their website um, and I'm using it because we're not getting a whole lot of help from EPA on it. So real quick, um, some of these have been put on hold. The CNT has been put on hold and the Bumblebee uh, has been put on hold until mid-March. But um, EPA has finalized steps to better protect bees. So if any of you use certain products, you may have noticed a, what we call a bee box on the label. Um, they are going to enhance that bee box a little bit, so they're going to be putting a little bit more restrictions. Uh, some of the labels said do not apply while bees are foraging or are in the area. Um, they're going to be a little more specific. They may say do not apply until all petals have fallen. Um, so they're, they're going to be a little more specific. Pay attention to that on the label. Uh, EPA did release their uh, four neonicotinoid assessments. Um, it's five total now because they did the imidacloprid uh, about a year ago. Now it's, it's their assessment, it was, it's what EPA, EPA came to their conclusion, but they, be, they do have to release it for public comment. Um, so we'll see what, what the comments are. But basically the, the, it was that uh, if the neonicotinoids are applied as directed, risks are minimal. That's, that was their conclusion. Uh, Rusty Patch Bumblebee, that's new, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, um, declared this endangered. It occurs in 13 states. Maryland is one of them. Uh, this could cause some issues, uh, and it's probably not going to matter where you live because I think they've stated it occurs throughout Maryland. It's not just before we had the Maryland snail darter, which was only in Hartford County, and it was only in a small section of Hartford County. Um, this, I believe, occurs throughout Maryland. So um, there may be some things coming down the road where you may have to go to EPA's website and check their, their endangered. There's an endangered species section on your pesticide label and um, it directs you to a website to see if there's any restrictions on that product in your particular county. Um, I haven't seen, nothing's been done yet because it's been put on hold. And whether the new administration will get rid of it, I don't know. There's, um, they've already been sued for putting it on hold. Um, so uh, that lawsuit came out, I think, this week. So they, um, we'll see what happens. Um, an Endless Duo uh, has been, that's the uh, basically dicamba beans. Um, that's been approved in Maryland. So we're going to see some of that. More than likely, we're going to see a lot of that going out this year. So, um, and then again, the new CNT rule, which um, we talked about briefly, but this, again, hopefully won't affect Maryland too much. And um, all it hopefully will do for us is is uh, raise the private applicator minimum age to 18. That's all I've got. Um, this is my CYA slide. Um, CYA for you. <laughs> um, look, I said it before, everyone's out there watching you. So, um, you know, know your surroundings, know what you're doing, and um, know your neighbors. Try to be a good neighbor if you can. I know not every neighbor uh, is, is going to like what you're doing. Um, we got a lot of houses growing in Maryland anymore. So, but just be careful when you're, when you're out there spraying. Um, we like to lower that. Uh, See that uh, six private applicator complaints go down to zero this year. So if you have any questions, give us a call.